Now I'm going to zoom in and focus just on Indiana. So we'll look at some particular patterns we saw in 2012. First off, start with kind of a negative. Uh, voter turnout was down, uh, down three, or just sorry, down four percent uh, compared to 2008. Particularly minority, uh, African American, uh, Latino, uh, but also uh, young people. And so young people were very excited, very energetic to get out and vote, uh, but not so much uh, here in 2012. So it's very interesting what that might be uh, due to. Uh, kind of like, uh, uh, I voted, it was cool, um, eh, I'd rather go Facebook. I think that might be one of the things we're seeing, but also the fact that Indiana really wasn't a place in which it was heavily campaigned in. So it really wasn't a you know, situation where young people were energized by uh, the candidates coming in and visiting us uh, too often. Uh, only two uh, counties actually had an increase in voter turnout, and those are two suburban counties uh, that are fast growing uh, around Indianapolis. Uh, Boone County, Zionsville, uh, but also Hamilton County with Carmel Fishers, Nobles, uh, Noblesville, Westfield, and all of that. Uh, also, think about Indiana, the kind of the national level, we were one of two states that went more Republican or actually switched uh, at all, uh, going from one uh, party to the other. Uh, and that was, uh, we shared something uh, with uh, North Carolina uh, in that regard. Further, Indiana, every single county, doesn't matter if it's an urban county or it doesn't matter if it's Gary, uh, voted more Republican uh, in 2012, uh, voted more for Romney uh, than they did uh, for, for, for McCain uh, in 2008. So we saw an increase for Republicans in every single county. Uh, other characteristics we think about Indiana, you know, one of the things, Donna Brazil, she was the uh, campaign strategist for the Democratic Party. After 2008, she proclaimed Indiana is, is baby blue. Indiana is going to be a Democratic stronghold for years. It's changed. Actually, I don't think so. I think 2008 was an anomaly. And I'll go through kind of explaining what was going on there in 2008. Uh, but uh, we're pretty much going to be Republican uh, for the foreseeable future. Further, we haven't voted Democrat since 1964. Uh, so it's something that's pretty much, we are a red state guarantee. We saw that in 1992 when we were pretty much surrounded uh, by nothing but blue uh, states when we voted Republican. Uh, further, uh, if we look at you know Romney's uh, victory here in Indiana, uh, he really succeeded in uh, suburban areas. Uh, and so these areas, one of the things is he increased his percentage uh, there, uh, so he increased 12%. But if we think about these areas, not only did he increase, but these places themselves are already increasing because they're fast growing. Suburban areas of Indianapolis, uh, uh, Louisville suburban areas, suburban areas of Chicago, these are areas that are fast growing in our state. Um, so he uh, won those uh, counties, particularly in uh, metro Indy suburbs, only 32% of the population, metro Indy suburbs, the donut counties that surround Marion County voted for Obama, so quite low. Further, youth, uh, youth young people voted 14% more Republican. So how do we have this shift from being baby blue to red? Young people went voting more back, uh, more to voting uh, Republican uh, in 2012. Uh, further, people that are older, so people that are already typically Republican voters, even more so voted Republican uh, in 2012, 10% more uh, in 2012 than they did in 2008. Uh, further, independents, once again, that group that's up in the air, the group that's 50-50, uh, the group that you don't really know what they're going to vote until Election Day, they also swayed more Republicans. So we can understand what happened uh, here in Indiana. Uh, finally, places with high unemployment uh, voted more Republican. So places that are pretty much, once again, it's not so much they're voting for a candidate, they're voting for change. And so if you've had job loss in your area over the last three or four years, you view that as something that, okay, I don't care, I just want something different. Uh, and so we can see those places that have had deindustrialization, places with high unemployment, voting much more Republican than they did uh, in 2008. Now let's take a look at Indiana. Uh, so first off, we're going to look at what happened in 2008. Uh, and so first off, we can see those urban counties, they stick out in but all of these maps. You can see Indianapolis, you can see Gary, uh, but you can also see Bloomington. Uh, Bloomington, of course, a lot of young people. I've already talked about that earlier. Uh, but then we have these other urban areas. And so we've got Evansville, uh, we've got Terre Haute, uh, Lafayette. Uh, Anderson and Muncie uh, that also voted uh, Democrat in 2008. Uh, and so let's go through kind of some basics as far as what happened here. First off, 
Anderson and Muncie. During the 2000s, these areas have seen massive deindustrialization. To showcase this in 1998, I believe there was three high schools in Anderson. Today, there's one. Why? Because there's fewer people there. Because there's no more jobs there. And so, once again, people, are they really excited to go out and vote for a Democratic candidate in this case? No, they're just more voting for someone different. Uh, so that's something we often see, is just people wanting to vote for change more than voting for a uh, candidate. Further, we got Vigo County over here in uh, uh, Terre Haute. Vigo County, uh, it's very good at predicting the national election. So as Vigo County goes, so does the country typically. Kind of a weird conundrum there. It's kind of a mix of everything, uh, Terre Haute is. It's a little bit of college, a little bit of industrial, a little bit of uh, uh, minorities. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. Uh, we look at, also we see Indianapolis uh, very much, uh, those, that's part of pretty much any, uh, is the Democratic stronghold of the state is Indianapolis and Gary. Now let's go to 2012. 2012 we can see pretty much those same areas keep on keeping on, uh, but Anderson went back to being more Republican, so it's kind of one of those deals where Anderson still has, has uh, massive unemployment and job also they're kind of like, well, not, you know, it's not like things that much better, so let's just go back to how we uh, normally vote. Same with Evansville, you could say. Uh, Fort Wayne, you can see Fort Wayne's red in uh, all these maps. Fort Wayne uh, is one of the largest cities actually in the country uh, that's pretty much always Republican. Um, so I, think, I believe Jacksonville, Florida uh, is up there as far as always being uh, you know, very much a Republican uh, area for being a large urban area, uh, but Fort Wayne, also that case as well. If we look in the northern part, uh, 2008 and 2012, what's going on up here? The hometown effect. It's essentially Chicagoland. It's about as uh, close as you can get to Barack Obama's home uh, turf. Uh, in, in the state of Indiana. Uh, continuing on, looking at uh, particular areas. And so I like to look at the places that went to most of the extreme. Uh, so let's look at four counties that uh, Romney won, uh, had his biggest uh, victories in, won by the largest margins. Uh, so there's four counties that he won the most. Uh, first off, Kosciuszko County. Uh, this is where Warsaw is. Uh, and so he won 75% of the vote. Very white, very rural. Uh, also, fairly highly, uh, fairly uh, high incomes in this county, actually. Uh, continue on, Davis County. This is where uh, Washington, Indiana is, down in the southern part of the state. Uh, very, very rural. Uh, so you could also say that about Warsaw as well. Uh, further, we got Wells County. Wells County, 72% uh, as far as its uh, uh, voted, uh, percentage of the population voting for Romney. Uh, Wells County also had the highest voter turnout. And so you can use pretty much higher, highest voter turnout, highest percentage of its population that went out to vote to kind of say, kind of showcase how energized is this group to go out and vote? How tipped off are they at things that they're going to go out and vote for, uh, for someone? Uh, so that's, we really see that in Wells County. Uh, Wells County has about, I think, 25,000, 27,000 people in the entire county. It's very, very rural. Heck, there's more people that go to IEPY. There's more people that park at IEPY's campus uh, on a Monday and Wednesday afternoon uh, than live in all of Wells County. That's a joke. All right, further, Franklin County, also quite rural. And so all these counties have something in common. They're pretty far from interstates. They're kind of rural as far as where we find them. Uh, Franklin County, uh, another rural, uh, largely uh, white population, very uh, uh, strong uh, uh, Protestant population there as well. Throw in a, a good amount of Catholics as well, but a uh, strong Protestant uh, uh, population there. Uh, let's now go to Obama's four biggest winners. And of course, these are going to be urban counties. They're also going to be quite young. They're going to have very much all those demographics that we would predict. Uh, we should expect based on the earlier discussions we've had. First off, Lake County, he won 65% of the vote. And that's, of course, the county closest to Chicago, uh, also home to Gary, Indiana. Very large African-American population. Same goes for Marion County, uh, very, uh, very, uh, very urban. Obviously, it's where Indianapolis is. Uh, but also high African-American population. Monroe County, very uh, young. Uh, it's also more of that liberal arts campus. So it's a little bit more of a population of students from urban counties. Uh, and so a uh, very young population, though, because it's a lot of college students that go to IU Bloomington uh, and stare at lava lamps and black lights all day long. Anyway, uh, continuing on, we've got uh, uh, LaPorte County, and so that's another county up there. Uh, it's got a, quite a bit of African Americans uh, up in this uh, county, uh, but also very close to Obama's home turf. Uh, and so we zoom into Metro Indy, so kind of focus in on our own city. Uh, and of course, we can see that donut effect. We can see uh, Romney supporters, Republican supporters, very much in those counties that surround Indianapolis. Uh, so we've got pretty much all these percentages are right around 30%, uh, except for Obama, 
kind of close to winning Anderson. That makes sense. Anderson, uh, sorry, uh, Madison County, where Anderson is, uh, went Democrat in 2008, uh, but also does have a considerable African American population there as well. Uh, but we can see Obama very low in a very rural uh, Hancock County and uh, Morgan County. So of, all, of our suburban counties, those are probably the uh, two with Shelbyville or Shelby uh, County that are the most rural. Uh, as far as metro any results compared to 2008, we can see uh, once again Obama decline in all the areas, uh, but in particular uh, the uh, southern counties, particularly Johnson County and uh, Morgan County and Shelby County, and these places are a little bit more uh, Protestant, a little bit more religious, a little bit more white, uh, and a little bit more rural than our northern suburbs, which are obviously the inverses of all that. Now let's take those four counties that Obama won convincingly and the four counties that Romney won uh, convincingly. Let's try to figure out what's going on there. What's the characteristics of those counties? First off, Romney counties uh, are definitely smaller than Obama counties, which is another key theme we've already mentioned. Further, Romney counties a little bit older uh, compared to Obama counties. We can see that with the percentage of persons over 65 years. Further, white population. Uh, we can see Romney much higher as far as those four counties versus the four counties that Obama won convincingly. Further, black persons. We see more percentage, a larger percentage in the counties that Obama won. Further, Hispanic and Latinos. We can also see uh, more uh, voters, uh, more Hispanic and Latino uh, uh, voters found in counties uh, that Obama won convincingly. Further, we look at a distance to travel. Kind of almost uses his rurality, uh, mean travel time to work, and so uh, another a proxy for, for showcasing urban uh, versus rural. Further, home ownership rates, and so of course we're going to find more homeowners there in rural areas uh, and suburban areas where uh, you're going to find more rentals and apartments in urban areas. Uh, other characteristics, we're going to find wealthier individuals uh, in those four counties uh, that Romney won convincingly compared to Obama counties. Finally, persons, uh, percent of a population below poverty level, we can find that, of course, over there in those four counties that Obama won uh, quite con convincingly. And so if we can kind of the typology of the uh, Romney voter in Indiana, typically a smaller and more rural as far as they're, where they're from, uh, typically are a little bit older, more white, less diverse, homeowners with higher incomes, and the inverse of that pretty much is where we find Obama uh, voters in, in uh, uh, Indiana, bigger, um, more urban counties, uh, populations that are younger, less white, more black, more Latino, but also lower income.